Hey, Panos, can you hear me? You're on mute. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, just quick audio test. I'm sitting in an airport. Yeah, we're fine. Hey, good morning, good evening. Good morning. All right. Hey, Jim, I got your feedback. I think something is going wrong when I email things. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, if, we'll it looks, it if the formatting looks okay to you, then, then we're good. No, no, I think some of what you said is correct. Uh, that doesn't look good to me either when I checked it, but... Okay. But I think some of the thing where it's moving around, that I don't see. But we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. And if you're seeing it, probably <laughs> the guys who I send the, the panel also sees it too. So we need to figure out what exactly is going wrong. With it. Yeah, you can, and you can talk through it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did I do? What did I do? Ah, right there. Okay. So let me start. Paras, unless you had something... Uh, I, I did. Uh, I also. I, I uh, myself had a few questions, so I wanted to quickly share and and ask these questions before people join. That way, it's not wasting people's time. But let me let me share quickly, okay? And then, if you have something, we can we can go back to that. Okay. Um, should, should we wait another minute for any other people to join? No, these are like. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. These are like the technical questions. These are like. Simple. Okay. So I think Jim, you said system architect, right? That's correct. Okay, and then so this is the logo I got, and it says use appropriate membership logo. I don't know what that means. Can you tell me what that means? Yes. So it means that uh, the authors of this presentation uh -huh. need to be members of OCP, and if we're platinum, if you're platinum members, or like, what is the I think it's a, it goes by the highest membership uh, level of anybody contributing the document. So I suppose we're platinum here, right? Um, okay, so we are platinum, right? This is okay yeah. to leave. Okay. I think I think so. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I'll just delete that. And then the other question I got, and this is something that probably needs to wait till everybody gets back, gets in, is which of these tracks do we follow? In this presentation, I remember seeing in, in one of those emails from Kate or Katie um, talking about sustainability. Right. I don't so know that if that's is, that's that. Yes. So sustainability is in two places: this one and this yeah. one. I think we should wait for Sami. He may have a better opinion on that. Okay, let's wait for that. I, I guess my opinion, looking at it, is the bottom one is I think most appropriate. Because of the word scalable there, yeah. That's what I was thinking, but let's wait. Yeah. I'll, I'll ping Sammy on the side to, to see, make sure he can join. He has some urgent thing going on today, is what he told me earlier.
I always get confused between system architect and systems architect. Is there an S after systems usually? Um, I, a system is a system. I don't know. <laughs> the, the singular works for me. Okay, singular works for you. Okay, whatever, you, whatever works for you, yes. <laughs> okay, I see Sammy joined. Uh, so should we wait for some more people or can we get started? Oh, and Scott joined too, so that's good. Okay, I think we're good to go then. Okay, so let me share again. And let's make sure I did this right. Okay, Sammy, so I think this one, we put platinum here because it has to choose which me membership type we are. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. And then um, I think that there are some, there's a list of tracks here. And which one should we pick? The, it can be only one, so we have to put it so on I the top. I think computer infrastructure, right? I think... Uh... That's the one. This is the one, right? That's a track. I think it's submitted. Yeah. Okay. I think we can change it is what I heard from Kate. I asked her. But yeah, so that's why I wanted to confirm. But if you go to the uh, schedule, detailed schedule. Mm -hmm. It's already. When you, when you click uh, which tracks, right? It shows that uh, track, right? Okay. Okay. And then uh, Scott, is the I capital in Delink? Like that, or it should be like that. Uh, right? Yes, it is. It is capital. Okay. And is there a dot? Is there a dot anywhere? Ink. Uh, should be. You, okay. you can just put tell uh, Dell Technologies. That's oh, okay. we've changed the name. I don't know. <laughs> okay, whichever uh, works. I mean, let me know. I'll ask legal, make sure, but that's what it should be. I think. Okay, just let me. Yeah, I'm for now. I'm putting it this way without the dot, and let me know if that. That changes so everybody okay with this slide yes okay perfect um so this slide i copied from last time again this is kind of an introduction to our group um and these are the kind of the purpose that we had defined comprehensive at scale remote service models inclusive of different sizes standardized interface for at scale remote services and enable added services i think this i got from sam itself so I'm going to just skim through it and yes, just I'm thinking on the back of my head, sh I, I should run it against what we have now in the wiki as our uh, scope and make sure like we're not okay. So I'll just give you that here, uh, yes, yeah, to do that. Um, I, I'm not going to submit until Sunday night and no. I'll push it up well, on the no, no, we, we, we could we could submit and do some last minute, you know, uh, changes okay. if, if needed, because that, that's not affecting the content as such of this presentation, right? Perfect, so I'll just put a note in here and comment and then leave it as that. And then when I submit it, I'll not include the comments, but just to remember, uh, Panos, to, to double check this against the wiki. Uh, that's good. Thank you, Fanos. And then this is the same slide as last time. It's kind of a recap slide. Nothing changed here. So I'll just skip over it. Um, this is also the same slide. Um, and what I did is I feel like there might be a typo here somewhere, but aggregates, I think. I don't think S belongs in aggregates. I'll check that. Uh, but I think what I want to show here is kind of the layering. So we have components, we have systems, and then we have we have we have kind of essentially two types of aggregates. One are physically co-located aggregates, and one are virtual aggregates. We do have more aggregates, uh, and that we may create a slide later uh, and put those list of all those aggregates that Jim had defined. Uh, but for now, I think I'm just listing all the categories of those. And I think you said, Jim, you said something is weird. About yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I was just going to, I was on mute. Um, I, uh, you know, we're showing that we're scaling in more than one aggregate dimension. So I, I think two is enough. Yeah. Could you either make the 10, the one zero bigger or the S smaller? Because that, 
that is just a little hard on the eye to parse. Um, no, smaller font for the S or the big or bigger font for the 10. Oh, okay. Let me do that. And and that's what I wanted to check again. And thanks for reminding me. Uh, um, my my eyes we, remind me. No, no, no. We we no, went but, back but, and okay. The S you, you uh, make the S go back to the same font as the of thousands of geolocated, because the S has just inherited the size that you set for the. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I think it was twenty. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. okay. But let me make sure. I think we. Last time as well, we went back and forth between hundreds and tens. Are we okay with tens, or should we? Should this be hundreds? Uh, I, I would say tens of thousands, and in the sense that we we want to define the breaking point size, where we move from a large scale to hyperscale, right? Where like a conventional, you know, monolithic solution of a single installation would not apply. So from the hundreds of thousands, we would like be able to go to the millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions if needed. But the point is to you know cross the breaking point size. Okay, so this is okay then, Thanos? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so this we already talked about last time. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, was there a question? Uh, I think. No, no, continue. Okay. So these slides, we I, I incorporated the the terminologies that we kind of identify, measure, and detect is the terminologies that I went through, and I fixed those based on the comments we had last time. This one also I fixed. I think I need to get rid of this one. I think I had a comment on utilization. Um, slide oh, six. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Th there's a something, there's a use case we can add in decommission, which is, um, I don't have the wording in front of me, but it was in the email I sent to you, something to the extent of compare the target utilization with what was observed in operational mode or... or... Like compare target utilization to I'm operational. I'm surprised this puts you to that bigger font already. You didn't just yeah. inherit the previous... Maybe if you go back to the previous one, go, go to the end of the previous sentence and then do a carriage your turn and you'll um yeah like that and you'll inherit it no <laughs> that's okay i can just fix it quickly here. okay i know what font it is yeah and and i can i will just put a comment here saying fix like, yeah so that's by the wording okay. yeah and and then okay. tag that to decommission and now we've got it across all four stages tag it. utilization use cases to decommission perfect thank you so much Okay, that's perfect. All right. So then, it, uh, anything on sa slide seven, the Jim or Scott or anyone? Any more feedbacks here? Okay. So then, jumping into health, I think we reviewed this one too. I I kind of added the post mortem analysis in the decommission phase. So that was one of the things that we had talked about. We talked about. Uh, sparing and we talked about health tracking health and and this one has a type this one has a problem too i don't know what's going on uh, so sorry. Okay, let me just do this yeah oh <laughs> jesus what's going on all right uh ah i know what okay so I think this one was supposed to be 18 i was right okay um all right so we went through this one. This one looks good. This one we went to as well. This is a busier slide. I want to kind of kind of reduce the verbiage here. So that's something I was trying to do, reduce, make it less busy. And I want to work on that. Um, so one slide that I'm missing, I I, I have to work on it. And I didn't get a chance to do it. Is here, I think. I think we the feedback was various phases may be interconnected. Like you could go from, you potentially could go from operate to plan, and there should be kind of a, a connection there. It should not look like a waterfall, uh, and that's the slide I want to add here. And there are two parts, so I want to split this slide into two parts. One is the interconnect the phases. 
and then also interconnect connect the use cases so right now there is a utilization use case and then there is a health use case and then there's performance use case uh, i think last time we said that these use cases there needs to be a diagram where we walk we walk through a scenario where all of these come together um, and so maybe this goes at the end and not at the beginning um, so yeah, yeah i suggest the end no not at the end like please uh, i was i was thinking you know trying to get into the clothes of uh, the presenter here um, how will i connect these slides like you know uh, in the verbal uh, wording how will i connect these slides to the general theme which is we want as a team to describe the life cycle or cover the life cycle of machines so having that injected somewhere around you know uh, the beginning of the slides you know or yeah even less than six slide and go back to the main theme and saying you know the whole idea here is to interconnect phases interconnect use cases and make sure that the tooling works against all that right okay fair so this um, this this needs to be stated somewhere in the presentation, and I don't right, mean right. the slides. I mean the presentation. We we need to keep keep some consistency in what uh, we're flow. trying to. Right, right, yeah. right. No, and 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 to be honest, we have some time for the flow. I think my goal yeah. was to get to the 80, 90 percent kind of scenario. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but 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 you're right. I think that slide is absolutely needed. Uh, I think we can we can use the time from now to April, a month from the next month to kind of nail down the flow and in which case we can figure out that yeah we need it at the beginning or at the end uh but i i, I let just i will for now i'll put a placeholder in okay the yeah, yes go ahead so like I'm, I'm just yeah. thinking now because i'm trying to you know uh let me learn comment. this presentation yeah. <laughs> no that makes sense uh need to close on the flow and based on that this slide may be important up front. Okay, I'll just put that in the comments so we don't forget it. Uh, okay, so that's from a content perspective. Okay, what happened there? Uh, okay, so we were at, and I forgot about that, and I'm going to work on this slide today itself. And I'm going to push that in, like with the presentation. But we can review it next week, and and kind of if you have feedback, we can correct it as well. Uh, it is a tough slide to work on, <laughs> um, and we we went through health, and I need to fix the busyness of the slide, and then jumping into configuration, we covered that a little bit uh, last week, but we ran out of time. Was there any? I think Jim, you, did you have any thing? That you wanted to cover additionally on this one? No, I, I, I think I said what needed to be said last week on configuration. Okay. And any feedback here, or? Yes, uh, some feed feedback is that this is a very specific example, and perhaps the the word example should be on the slide. Okay. Like this is that this is that does not exhaust the space of configuration for everything we do in a data center, like by any means, right? But like. Or you can put it, example, in parentheses in a smaller font or something, you know, to to say, you know, let's cover a configuration and let's give an example of how the NIC configuration is dependent on other uh, parameters of of the data center layout. For example. Yeah, that was exactly okay. the intention. This is this is this. These are the kinds of things that come into play configuring a NIC card. Different yeah. other other entities will have different considerations. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so is this okay as a yes. here or okay. Yep. okay? All right, perfect. And again, it will probably be the same for this one. Yeah, I will kind of like that example, and I will shorten the font a little bit. Thirty-five. Uh, I'll fix the typos. I'll fix the yeah. So, so, I think so Panos had a, a, a comment last time, if you go back. So I, I just, I was trying to illustrate, no, one forward. 
on the help. Next, the next no configuration. The next slide. Oh. The, the oh the requirements. Okay. So so Pam. So I was in the last two lines. I was or the last line. I was trying to illustrate something, a configuration item that was using an opaque something opaque to OCP. And then Panis's comment uh, suggested, well, perhaps LLDP ought to be part of our plan. It, it, LL, we should be very fully cognizant of LLDP. So if if there's some other example, um, I, I mean, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to say we're going to, we, we will we'll behave gracefully with things we're not sure about at this point. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, uh, I can think of several upstream technologies that we consume and we interact with, like, uh, you know, uh, DMTF, uh, Redfish, and other uh, technologies need no introduction here, uh, you know, including SMBIOS, UFI, and whatnot. Uh, I was thinking now out loud about syslog technologies, uh, things that's exist in the Linux world or the Windows world um, and how they scale or help or not help in a very large deployment. We could just mention these names to say, you know, there is so many technologies that we use for the to, to operate uh, the machines and sooner or later this uh, feedback and interact with the with the size of the deployment, and either help us or become bottlenecks of um, of our fleet. See, right? Okay. So, I, like, I can think of the example. I can think of the example of uh, journal D protocol that incorporated some very corporate or enterprise level features like signing of logs and uh, unique identifiers of machines uh, or boot IDs that are unique identifiers. This, and this technology is meant to be on large networks. So, so Norov, could you put example, a comment yeah. here? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the comment should be uh, add, add one or more additional examples for the last bullet. And, um, and, and iron out the text with Panos. All right, perfect. I will, I, I documented syslog technology. I, I don't know what that is, but I just let me know if that documented. Yeah, and if you can bring, if you can bring more examples, because you know, I, I don't know everything here, but you can bring more examples of something which is meant for while like large scale enterprise or data center use, and it's like on the software protocol layer, that's that would help. Yeah, yeah, but I just want to make sure I didn't lose what the example you gave. Is that right? Is that the right word? Yeah, like uh, sys. Yes, yeah, syslog is yes is one thing. Um, now, now I'm thinking of like any other discovery protocols that are tailored. For this and might might come into play here. All right, all right. I'll just put that as a document, yeah. uh, like just so that we don't forget it. Okay. Uh, and and but, the yeah. challenge, the, ch the challenge with these things is that these discovery protocols are going to produce some results that we care about, and they're going to produce other results that we don't care about. And so sifting through and yes. getting what we what helps us is the challenge here. Correct. Let me write that down also is humongous data coming out of, I guess, ton of data coming out. Need to sift through it before it is communicated up the chain, up the hierarchy. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'll write that down as well as a comment. Good. Any other comments on this? And I don't want to go too fast, so let me know. I mean, just stop me and point at anything. All right. 
So this is a new slide that we just added. Uh, the formatting is not perfect. I'm still working on it. Um, uh, but I think, did you want to walk through it, Jim? Sure. Um, I, I did have a change. I wrote a comment. Um, can we switch the order in uh, points 1A and B? I think micro benchmark should come before synthetic. Oh, uh, I, I, I made a mistake in the, <laughs> yes. Okay, so so this now in in a in similar in both comparison and contrast to utilization, performance is related to utilization, but it, it is it's in its own right it's a topic, and so what we're trying to understand here or we're trying to express is that um, in the world of performance testing, typically people have um, various ways to com vendors compare themselves to each other and various ways that customers compare. Uh, amongst amongst the choices of vendors for a given component. Um, and usually a lot of times we use what, what we call micro benchmarks. And I, I just want to add some examples here. NetPerf is what we use a lot of times to measure NICs. Allgather is something that we use uh, to, to measure um, Rocky performance. FIO, that, the F is for flexible. That's what the storage world uses a lot of times. FIO can help you uh, get, uh, you know, can bang on a disk to read, write, do random reads and writes. Spec HPA, HPC is the uh, high performance computing flavor of the, the well-known spec protocols. So the idea is that a custom prospective customer would try to gain, would try to gain an understanding of performance using that. Also, and that's, that's relatively easy. That's easy compared to the next one, which is if the customer has what, what I wrote, uh, the, the term synthetic workloads. In other words, they have some idea of what the production workload would look like, and they've got some test program that kind of has similar demands on the system. So one of the things that we see uh, data, center, uh, data center managers do is during the plan stage or design stage is they, if they haven't already done it, they want to look at the particular tests, whether it's micro benchmarks or synthetic workloads, as to how they're going, what what tests or what stimulus are they going to to put in to to measure these these contenders for components, um, and then when it comes time to deploy um, or procure, maybe maybe you buy a couple. A lot of the for NICs, you know, a lot of these things can be run with two NICs back to back. So maybe maybe you buy a couple of them and you, you do your own in house testing. Uh, eventually, you come to deploy them, and and maybe you're doing some testing along the way, maybe with the micro benchmarks or with synthetic synthetic. Uh, workloads. When you start operating, those micro benchmarks and sy synthetic workloads are not nearly as relevant as the real production workload that's being run. There are very few tools today that will measure and, and record meaningful statistics that could be used to characterize a running workload. And the more people I talk about this to, uh, you know, within Broadcom, um, they're really they're saying, yeah, if, you, if we could crack that nut, that would be a huge step forward uh, for customers understanding, you know, what what their networks are actually doing. So, the the idealistic vision goal here is to actually um, is to do that is is to be able to collect performance statistics artifacts that would help us that would help the customer characterize his unique workflow, um, and and if especially if if this is a equipment owner that's leasing, you know, leasing to tenants. He has no idea what the tenant workload is, and and so these things would be very helpful. And then you take that, you know, at when the when the equipment is uh, decommissioned, maybe it's end of life, or maybe you're just decommissioning it for a week to study performance or something. But but uh, but here you compare the performance results of what you thought it should deliver based on the offline benchmarks versus the production workloads, and you make some decisions: is it performing like I expected, or is it? Is it performing uh, better than I expected? Is um, so. That's how we're trying to utilize or or, or get at performance under, understanding through the the four uh, life cycle phases. Any questions? I fully agree and echo that what you just said. Okay. Uh, I think I think performance is a huge rabbit hole to enter, and you know, uh, it's like a labyrinth of. Uh, parameters there um, I would see we need two things like we need a standardized way to uh, level or normalize performance to something that the industry can compare 
But on the other hand, it's it's payload, it's hyperscaler or tenant has their own requirements. So it's just like shifting the dimension, pivoting the dimension from the dimension of something which is very well defined to something which is you know highly volatile and very specific, right? Yep. So so yeah, the point the point is how to make these dimensions not be perpendicular, but be as you know as close to each other, so that if we want to replace a component or redesign a component based on some industry data, we have something you know useful to compare against before right. we can apply our our payload to the other equipment. Yeah, and, and so this was a really good thought exercise trying to abstract this because in my world of Nix, I mean, we care about bandwidth, we care about latency, and we care about, um, there's one more and I'm having a, oh, we, we care about we care about packet rate and we care about bit rate. But you go talk about storage, it's a completely different set of concerns. If you go talk about CPUs, it's a different set of concerns. So this, this will be a, a challenge or if you're an optimistic person like me, a great opportunity to try to try to take those things and integrate them into a comprehensive view of what is performance. Okay. But I I would seriously doubt if we can come up with a single metric ever. Oh, I agree. I amount. agree. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it's not even a job to do that. Uh, Maybe it's a job. I mean, what well, we our, job, is... our job is to come up with some set of but... metrics that best represents a I wide the, range the of. Into... Sorry. No, no, sorry. I think. Uh, um... <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was saying, you know, if we just uh, get with a uh, best me uh, set of metrics that covers, you know, uh, the usual or a wide variety of use cases like a spider graph that we can like put them around and and show that like i think that's our job okay okay yeah that makes sense and and yeah i, I agree that this the requirement it needs to be there um we need to make an attempt at it if we fail that's also a data point you know uh that hey this is not doable these are the reasons why right so I don't think I don't look at it as a failure. I look at it as an analysis and the result of it. So yeah, but if we don't do it, then this question is going to persist: Is it even possible or not? Um, and and some people believe that it's possible. Some people may believe it's not possible, and then we can kind of yeah. So fully agree that we are at the right level here, but there's still for the paper still more work to be done on this one. And including everything, actually, including all of those scenarios. So jumping into the requirements, uh, Jim, you want to cover these two? Yeah, so so uh, like the same approach I had in configuration. I'm just trying to write down some things here that are necessary, I think, to, to accomplish the things on the previous slide. We need to have performance micro benchmarks. Um, if we're going to do synthetic workloads, we need we need to have ones that are available to a given data center or cloud. And, and you know, we may not have this number two synthetic workloads, but I, the, the point is, in order to do this well, a customer hopefully is, is thinking like this. Um, in, and the rest of the things are just very practical things. You know, installation, initiation, and monitoring of, of, of benchmark programs. Certainly, we need to, to, to be able to uh, configure the hardware parameters, whether it's bio settings or whether it's NIC or RAIDs uh, controller settings whatever affects the performance. Um, and that'll be different depending on what you're looking at. Um, the downloading of test scripts and the execution of test scripts, that's kind of analogous to what I already said before in configuration. This last thing though is is new to performance that, that I wrote down. And that is uh, at least new to this slide set, which is we need to be able to access log files or other artifacts, whatever they are uh, containing perf measured performance statistics. Um, so, um, that's you know you know that's that's a a, a, a big definite definitional challenge as well. Um, and that's I all that had, comes to mind right now. I had a question to Panos on this one, which I which I've been trying to kind of 
figure out how to ask is like we have micro benchmarks which are focusing on components. We have synthetic workloads that focus on a system level. Do we have data center level uh, benchmarks? Like, hey, a benchmark that goes and starts like 100 virtual machines and and triggers a large like AI model or something like that. Uh, and then kind of distributes it across different aggregates and then collects the information based on that and, and just measures the health of the aggregate or measures the performance of the aggregate. Is there something like that that already exists? Well, on the open world, like in, you know, um, upstream, I'm not aware of such a thing. But I would challenge, I dare to say, or, you know, that uh, some, some hyperscalers or some integrators may have some tools to cover a part of this ask, right? And I'm, like, I'm challenging here how much of the CSM work group uh, it is to, to actually do that end-to-end, -end, right? Or not, not do the well. Uh, forget my wording here. Uh, uh, like, are we trying to just solve the problem with no, a custom no. implementation, or allow the industry to collaborate and combine components on that area, so that you know its integrator or hyperscaler or customer can carry out carry that out right no no i i think i think all i was trying to say is our theme is that you know things we want to we want to aggregate things in such a way that things make sense things that make sense at a at a component exactly. at a system level make also make sense at a at an aggregate level and yes. that's that's all i'm trying to confirm here is that yes i mean there whether they're proprietary or not is this is not the point here uh, the point here is that there are benchmarks that that run on at an aggregate level that that do and that is something that the from a csp perspective hyperscaler perspective that's important to have right so so representing that data representing that data at an aggregate level is also important is all i was trying to get that and see if check that check my yes. check my thinking on that one yeah like you know uh, the analogy of cars that come to my mind you know somebody who is a racing driver buys the new car and wants to test it on their own racetrack, the one that they have access to, right? And uh, each driver will use it differently, will push it to different limits, will put it on a different road. But uh, at the end of the day, what they require for a car is to have the same speedometer or some instruments or some facilities that will help them evaluate that a device that machine against their use right and okay. then that they have that, that they have a common wording to describe uh what they got out of that car like if somebody talks about uh, consumption in liters per 100 kilometers and the other like gallons per uh, what is it uh miles per gallon then you know they don't have a common uh language then it's not aggregatable so, yeah right. yes so I'm saying, you know, we need some standardized facilities on top of which we would be building uh, the very specific performance tests. Yeah, I think sustainability side, they're talking about uh, foot labeling. Uh, yes. Some, uh, something similar to that. To uh, say what is uh, yeah, your uh, performance, how much carbon it's going to be there, how much power it's going to consume or what now, whatever it is, right? Um, I believe... Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Sami, sorry, let, let, me, let me interrupt you there, Sami. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were to come up with a composite measurement like the water consumption per performance, then having a normalized version of performance is even more important because we're not talking about like uh, teraflops or just like me megawatts of consumption. We're talking about something, you know, how much water do you need against that performance? Right. And if you cannot like normalize the performance, how would you normalize the water usage, for example, right? 
yeah so yeah there is kind of multiple things there, right to your yeah, water usage per facility all depends on your geo location and what is a uh, uh, outside temperature inside temperature all kind of things plays into the picture right um and i think what they were kind of looking is yeah if if you want to uh, define some ideal system with a ideal uh, environment then you could probably say like hey with this environment here is a performance supposed to be and uh, here is the power is going to be consumed i don't know even they want to go to iops or uh, level to say like uh, how much it's going to produce right like a mileage cup per gallon kind of thing right uh, but i think uh, i think here we really need to say like it's one of the requirement but we don't have a common uh, uh, metrics there right because even some people use a, a cpu and gpu for different different purposes say depending on the purpose they will be looking different metrics right 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 so um, but i think i think i think both of you guys are right i think but I, we don't have to solve the problem today i just want to make sure we write that down here as a requirement right, so right. um the so taking the example that panas you gave like cars and running on a highway right or car uh, race cars running on a race race track or something like that i think the question i was asking is there are two aspects to it one aspect yeah, i think you and sami both covered which is a hey, that needs to be a standard way of measuring the performance of individual cars fair enough but i think from a benchmarking perspective i the fact that i'm simulating the car only on an empty race track with the synthetic workload is one aspect of it but sh- yeah. do we do i need to have a requirement to simulate that car in a in a com- in a in a in a race track with other cars present as well where it can it can break against other cars and it can figure out those scenarios too which today we don't i mean may, may not have it at the open source level but uh, we may have it at a proprietary level but should there be a requirement to call that out i think our job is to yes to form that requirement to investigate the needs with a survey across the industry and put some frame around this thing Say, okay yes so like, you need to so really need that, the, how do we d- define a race car racing in the traffic uh of other race cars or other normal cars for example like you know how do we put that in wording yes and in numbers yeah i think that also another good point here right maybe out of uh, all these things right conclusion is we want to form a survey and in survey you could say like i don't know there may be a different metrics you could uh, have option for people to select or even people can suggest a new metrics if they want to right correct 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 yeah and and then uh what i'm what i'm thinking about is uh this idea to collect enough data to try to um to that, that gives you a feeling of the demand so for instance if we were if we were instrumenting the steering wheel and the gas pedal and the brake pedal and we were taking that data and then we said okay uh, you know for a three minute you know run around the track this is how the gas is pressed and the brake and 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 try to boil that down um into something that could be replayed as a synthetic workload for the next time like a understand recorder. better right. yeah like a recorder yep yeah so but yeah i think I know that I know for a fact that that's how like I used to talk to somebody who builds these workloads and I met that person in like Sysmark I met that person in a conference and they mentioned that that's what they do they they kind of uh, collect data across environments and they take that data and they find out what is the most representative workload and they run that workload through and then record that workload and then replay it as a as an environment so i think that's a great point uh, i don't know how to re- represent it though in here well um, you know what i i i i think actually what we've been talking about for 10 minutes is a good way to represent it it's it's an analogy and it, you know it, it's i mean it's a, 
it's a whole lot easier, I think, to understand a car running around a racetrack than it is to running to some AI computation. So, so I think that's actually a very good analogy to use to try to explain this. Right, right. No, I, I meant in a in a slide deck, but for that's a talking point that we sense. we don't need to put it down on the slide, but we could put it in the presenter's notes so that you know as a talking uh, point. I can okay. talk about okay. that. Here. Perfect. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah. So that's great. So I think we have the content in here, um, and so we can use that as a talking point to kind of represent. Perfect. So that's good. Um, any other feedback on this slide? Hey, the one thing I was thinking about, Jim, if, if you're up for it, is on the last bullet about access to log files or other artifacts, I'd like to somehow word in stream or aggregate that information as well. Uh, my preferred word would be to integrate against the log files because we would have measuring equipment, uh, telemetry in any other normal payload, normal production load. But the point is, if we're carrying uh, out uh, performance experiments, is how to integrate, how do we have, you know, not just access, how can we use the correct telemetry information against that experiment, right? So aggregate... The, no, I or think integrate. The integrate. 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 Actually, actually I, I think it's two different points. Um, I, I, what I was thinking when I wrote that was just get access to data to get to get the recorder to get the recorder's data, um, and that's a prerequisite for what you guys are talking about now, Scott and, and Panos. Yeah, and I think that's that's what I think. First, we get access to it, and then we kind of summarize it. Is is summary a better word or? I, I don't really. Yeah, we can leave access to log files. I just think that uh, you know, like we in, in in my own experience, we've we've struggled at times managing the size of log files and looking through them for data. And so we, we at times go in like sort of like what Pano said. We integrate it into the system level telemetry so we can pick off, if you will, the pieces that we need. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and I I guess what I'm just tr uh, trying to say is that. There's there's two problems here. One is actually getting some data, and and we can talk about, yeah, uh, we don't just mean everything. We mean some statistical representative representation of that. But then the other is to is to is to integrate it with other things. Yeah, and it's I think I don't know. It's just sort of I've I've run into the problem in my own experience recently with like there's this there's this assumption of one size fits all where it's like we're gonna have you know, just telemetry. And it's like, well, no, because sometimes your data blobs are too big. <laughs> and then other, or there's some other, you know, factor that's in the way. And then on the same side that we have, I have other folks, vendors, suppliers, developers who are just putting like tons and tons and gobs of information, you know, trying to capture reality into a log file. And it's like, well, we don't have the, we don't have the resources and the hardware or the software to do that. And once you have it, then do we have anything we can use to parse it that's efficient? <laughs> so, right. Right, and and so there needs to be you know filtering um, parameters that uh, that we use to to say what what what's the level of data that we can digest and be you know and and, and turn out good results. Yeah, yeah. ultimately I in my brain that's sort of what DSMs are actually sort of about. It's the plan the, the think about and plan ahead of of how this you know how you how you take these systems. What what at what inflection point do you make the next step on this on this system or when I say system, I mean hardware and software. Like, how do you go to the next step? When do you go to the next step? And I think, be able to have the data to make that decision. So, I think, I think let me let me try what I'm trying to say to for size and see if that works for all scenarios. I think what we need is configurability. So, I was having this exact same conversation with some of the folks internally, and what we are saying is there are scenarios when you want like raw data, like complete raw data. Uh, and you want to be able to kind of take it offline and, and analyze it, but the hardware may be capable of only so much. The hardware cannot aggregate and give you raw data at the same time. So what you do is you, you kind of have a config, runtime configuration where you can go and tell the hardware, hey, now give me from now on to the next 10 seconds, give me all the raw data. But as, as a general view, uh, after I have gotten that raw data, as a general configuration, have it kind of do some level of some some integration or summarization before 
projecting it out to limit the bandwidth of the log that comes out. So it kind of it kind of goes to configurability. You probably need both of those things, you pr and they, you need them those both of them in different scenarios, and you should be able to configure the hardware to do one or the other. Uh, I agree. On, okay. So so is that is that okay to have a configuration co concept to to project this? I, I I, I think I think it's it's required to, to get the data that's relevant and not get and not drown in, in data. Correct, correct. So there are scenarios where you want to drown and you want to get as much data as possible, but those are like very specific scenarios where your bugs are involved, you know. Um, and then there, in general, you want aggregation. You want you want integrated logs, which are kind of summarizing things. Uh, so I think the, the way to do that will be have a configuration. Configuration, some 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 level of configuration into the device or components. So I'll I'll keep this integrate the logs to a system level, but also I will add a requirement for configurability. Uh, config configurability at component system aggregate level to. level for the scale of for the scale of telemetry i don't know if that comes out very well what i'm trying to say but i will keep let me if you need if you have verbiage on this one let me know uh, but this is kind of a whip verbiage so i'll just put that in there if you think of something better to rep represent what we discussed uh, yeah I, I will keep working on this but yeah let me know if you have a better verbiage on this all right, so this is great discussion. We have two more slides. Um, I think this is the summary I've copied over from last time. I haven't worked on it a little bit, but maybe we can. So I think I think the summary itself is great. I, I need to work on it a little bit more. I, I haven't done this work. So, but if you guys have feedback, let me know. And And again, I don't know if we need this right away, but I, I have it as a placeholder, but this is not uh, this is not the correct summary. <laughs> not the correct summary. So thinking out loud, we do need the summary slides. Of course, yeah, yeah. we cannot like cut it down. Uh, the second line would be uh, we have already done it. Uh, so you know, like that's like we like most data centers and most uh, uh, operators are growing on exponential scale, but like some of them are already in the so-called hyperscale, which means uh, a very large size. Um, are already at a... unique problem. Yes. No, I I'm saying no. Like keep the first as is and say, you know, like already at hyperscale means we have a new set of problems, right? Already at at a at a hyperscale, at hyperscale. A hyperscale introducing Found. yes, introducing new problems and these new, problems. New the third line, yes, the third line is these problems are not just about the raw number of machines; is the sophistication that we need to bake in uh, to all that system of machines to make it work. Uh, efficiently to make it work to deliver, right? Sophisticated yeah. uh, solution. solution. Yeah, data no, no. Model. We, we need a sophisticated solution plus data model, and that's what we um, that boils down to the life cycle the, management requirement. Just the scale, but yes. also the also the well, well no. no and I think I think we repeat that here. It's not like we could um, rearrange that sentence to say it's not just the scale, but the sophistication oh, that yeah. leads to the life cycle management Address requirement. The scale, that the required sophistication. Yes. The required sophistication. Uh, Sophistication. Which, uh, 
sophistication presenting a need for a common data model no for presenting needs for life cycle management presenting a need to reassess the life cycle no to track to track to follow to model the life cycle to model oh to model the to model the life cycle model the life cycle okay perfect uh, uh yes identify identify unique opportunities for standardization i walk through specific walk through scenarios to identify use cases unique use cases and requirements here are the stories here are the stories of hyperscalers of the industry <laughs> call it yeah Walk to the yeah uh, comment comment on the the fourth uh unique um I, I, i'm thinking needed needed opportunities not unique or, or needed, or just identifying additional needed standardization. By okay, additional Addition, additional needed standardization. Oh, sorry, I'm bad at this. Doing it live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your, your cursor is walking like a drunk sailor. I am drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I'm not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I should be the one here, like preparing for St. Patrick's here, but that's another. I story. know. <laughs> Yesterday was Pi Day. Today's St. Patrick's Day, man. I, it's a week of festivities. It's not, yeah, it's uh, it's on Sunday, in fact, but it's oh. like the weekend now, the whole weekend. So, anyway, <laughs> back to the line identify. I think you have it on your uh, clipboard. Uh -huh. uh, Oh yeah. Just based yeah. after they identify uh, opportunities okay. for uh, additional needed standardization. Okay, opportunities. Okay. Uh, walk through scenarios to identify unique uh, to present uh, unique use cases and requirements, and and then we need walk with work with industry or um, invite industry to uh, better help define the, the framework. To help define the framework that meets these requirements. Okay. Perfect. We are good. That's, Done. Yeah. And then the last slide That's is called to action. Me. Uh, and the call to action is just pretty much uh, engage with OCP. This is service model box stream. I link to your wiki, um, and that's is it good? Yep. All right, right on time. <laughs> okay, yes, just cross the line. <laughs> I will I will paste this in the in our SharePoint just now. Um, so let me know if you have okay. any feedback. Okay. I will be editing it until well into Sunday night. Yeah. So well, we, yeah, we need we need to submit it, and I start. I need to start the legal here, like to uh, yeah, to yeah. get my approvals, you know, because I need to have like some something almost final here. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll push this right now, and then keep working on it. Okay. And Sunday night is when I will submit it on the tool in the okay. OCP. Yeah, good. Narav. So, so Narav, I, I've been gone all week, and um, I'm about to get on a plane and go home. And my wife is going to demand my attention for several days. So uh, no I don't know. How, don't I don't know how much of any help you're going to get from me. No worries. I, I I think we are there. I think we're ninety. We, we have the light slide deck. I just need to fill up that one slide, and that's it. So okay. We're good. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Thanks for all your work, Narav. Thank you. They know. I mean, everybody. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah. See you next week then. All right. See you guys. Thanks, next everybody. Week. Bye. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.